Hello and welcome to the fourth instalment of my Helium tutorial videos. Now in this tutorial I want to go over some um, advanced features that maybe uh, beginners would probably never want or need but anyone that wants to get the most out of Helium uh, these things are essential. So I'm going to start with um, with the MIDI click library that shipped in the second release of Helium. Um, we've got over 7,000 MIDI clips now available to us and these clips are really comprehensive but they are, if you installed the uh, update you probably will not see these clips and that is because I didn't want to overwrite anyone's existing clip libraries without permission so if you really want to install this uh, brand new clip library with uh, over 7,000 clips and variations uh, there's two ways of doing it one is to do a completely fresh install of Helium and they will show up or the second way is using a option that I provided in standalone mode by clicking the input options button at the bottom of the dialog you now have an option to restore default clip library uh, be warned though this will overwrite your existing clip library so if you have already installed loads of clips back them up first and of course now uh, with the second version of Helium we can now preview a MIDI clip just by tapping and holding on that clip. Um, and that makes it very easy to uh, hear a chord progression or individual chords before you drag and drop them to the timeline. So to recap, if you don't see this chord library show up in your installation, either do a fresh install or pick the option in standalone mode that I've just shown you. So by default, uh, Helium exposes four MIDI ports, uh, which can be used in uh, AUM to route MIDI. Uh, and that is because uh, essentially uh, this menu can get quite full up. So, it, but you can actually choose how many MIDI ports you want to expose. So you could have up to 16 if you so wish. Now the menu button has a little triangle in the upper left corner meaning we can long press it to get additional options. So single press we get the menu, long press for the additional system options. And these are system wide on the long press rather than the uh, single um, press options which are all to do with your project. And I, I've moved the um, the uh, high contrast uh, option here and we've now added a uh, invert colors but we can set that number of ports say to eight and if you notice there was a little pop-up message asking us to restart helium because as you can see nothing's changed but if we relaunch helium and take another little look at that uh, pop-up uh, menu we'll see that we've now got eight ports available to us in total but don't forget you can go up to 16. Now another feature I added in the most recent version is the ability to show a key and scale uh, on the piano roll. Now the piano roll by default just shows you where the octaves are but if you tap and hold on the time signature button and then click the leftmost button which is the enable scale button you'll see that the uh, A major scale is now um, displayed on the piano roll itself so you know exactly which keys belong that scale so this is a very useful and quite a well requested feature which I will be expanding upon as time goes on currently we've got most of the main scales in here but I know there are more that I could add and that will come in a future update but that brings me to another new feature that makes good use of the key and scale and that is the random feature now I've currently got a, a an A minor uh, scale set here. It doesn't matter whether we turn the scale on or off particularly, but I'm going to pick the randomize option from the menu, which displays this little draggable uh, window, which uh, has a, a lots of options to do with randomization. We have the 12 keys at the top, which we can manually enable to create custom scales. But I'm just going to press the um, Use Scale button, which is applied the A minor scale to those row of uh, 12 keys across the top. Now you can see from these settings that we're generating notes between octave 4 and 5. But if I hit the Randomize button now, you'll see that 
I get an error message pop up on screen and nothing happens. And that's because we need to select an area uh, for the randomized function to work. So I've selected a four bar area here. And I'm making sure that the mode is mono ARP before I press the randomized button. But there we go, we've got a set of quarter notes randomized and we can play that little arpeggiated sequence back. Now that, all those notes are in the key of A minor and they're all quarter notes because the grid is set to quarter notes. Now you'll notice that each time I randomize uh, a set of notes that they're all one note per division, beat division or quarter note division. Uh, if we change the mode to polyarp and regenerate, we can create some nice polyphonic harmonies here. You can also use the left and right buttons either side of the generate to rotate that uh, selected area left or right. And they're shifted in, uh, in uh, divisions of grid size, just be aware of that. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set the uh, upper and lower octaves to octave 2. And I'm going to set the, um, the grid size to bar. And I'm going to generate a set of bass notes here to go with this. And these bass notes will be generated in the same key and add a bit of body to the pattern. Now for a bit of variety I'm going to uh, take some of those notes that were generated before in the upper octave and I'm going to generate some finer, maybe eighth notes here. So I think we initially generated between four and five. So let's just generate on octave five a set of eighth notes and see what that sounds like. And if we enable the note velocities button and then generate again, we'll get a set of notes with varying velocities. Now both the mono and poly app generate uh, random notes of a given length but there's actually a random option which can generate varying note lengths. Uh, that is dependent again on the grid size though so decreasing the grid size will actually increase the complexity of the amount of notes generated but they will be smaller in length. Again this is something that I intend to work on over time, add a few more modes uh, with a few more uh, musical ways of generating uh, randomness. So now I want to come on to a quite an important thing really. If you're working on a song and you suddenly decide uh, you've got 16 tracks of audio and you want to insert something smack in the middle. Uh, we've all been there. Now the way to do that is quite simple. Uh, as you can see here I have eight bars of music. Assume the first four bars is my verse, the second four bars is my chorus and I want to insert four bars of additional note data at bar four. So to do this the first thing you do is range the area where you want to uh, insert the blank space and then you tap and hold on the uh, beat time and uh, you can select insert beats from that uh, pop-up. Now we can insert the beats on the currently selected track as I've just done there and if I switch tracks you'll see that uh, it's only inserted extra space on the current track we were on which was track one. Now I'm going to undo that, tap and hold on the beat time Pick insert and this time I'm going to uh, choose to insert on all tracks and if I then switch to uh, the other tracks you'll see that space has been inserted uh, throughout my song. Now you may find yourself uh, in the other position where you want to remove a section of a song and the easiest way to do that is to uh, range the selection, uh, tap on beat time and this time uh, select remove beats and again you get the same pop-up choosing whether you want to remove from the current track or from all tracks. Now just one point to make here I just used the undo to get myself back there to uh, uh, the previous state but if you tap and hold the undo button there is a redo in there I mean some people have not noticed that that uh, option is available. Now to round off this video, uh, I just want to point out something that was added to the last update, 
which might help out people using the remote feature. Now the remote feature is fantastic, great. Uh, but there can occasionally be conflicts between uh, routing MIDI into control the remote feature and um, and inputting data into the sequencer. So to solve that, I have added a controller channel for the remote and it's there just by tapping and holding on the remote button. So that concludes this video. Um, don't forget to subscribe for more videos coming soon. Uh, thank you for watching. See you next time.